They'll be calling you a radical. A few things we want to talk about as far as Fukushima goes. The Post Ignorance Project, February 29th and 30th. I want to explain a few things. First off, TEPCO is nothing more than the Lee Harvey of the whole nuclear complex. Talk about a patsy. This story that's coming out that, oh, some of these assemblies were fused together before 3.11.11. What a lie. What a joke. Total lie. Total joke. I want to talk about our protest on the 29th and 30th. As I think it's ironic, the very first one is there was sent for in from Australia. She spelled ignorance wrong. And so on her way, she changed it to ignorance. I think that's so great because isn't that what this is? Really, isn't that what it is? We have to play the hand. That, is it too late? Yeah, for so many. We have to play the hand that's dealt to us. This nuclear freakingism is, cannot be put back in the jar. So, just like she changed the sign, we have to freaking alter. We have to freaking change our lifestyle, change our ways. We have to call attention to what this is. We need to stop it. You know, we, so when you go out to your plants and your places on the 29th, 30th, if the weather's bad, you could do this by yourself, but put up things, and if you're going to have a gathering, if the weather gets cold back, take it inside, take it to the local bar, take it whatever, you know, in your homes, whatever. We really, the signs and the protests all over, it's important that we do this, and if you don't think I'm making a difference, as we have awoke a sleeping giant called Anonymous, the protests against the mainstream media that went all over the United States, last, it went on Saturday. Read this from the one in Fresno, California. Read this one. Oh, we awoken a sleeping giant. As I said when I stood there in D.C., you're not going to stick a microphone in the dumbest one in some shields and take this, not this time, not this time. Fuck no, we are the fucking media now. And let me tell you, you don't the media, you don't want to report? We're the fucking media. There's a price to pay. And you fucking elected leaders, you don't want to lead? Fuck you, who needs you? We will lead. I will lead. We will lead. Who fucking needs you? That's what we're down to. The story's been told, the tale's been told. We have solutions. We have solutions. We're not hot air. Like I said, economically, environment, we have answers. The answer is let's close all these nuclear, and you idiots that think, and you morons that think, oh, nuclear's a place with coal, that's like compared to cyanide to arsenic. The carbon footprint of nuclear is many times that of coal. You have to mine uranium. You have to enrich uranium. That's not even talking about the complex of taking it out. You think you can avoid this and this is going away, and you so-called elected leaders. Uncle Tom Obama, oh yeah. Boy, the flyover jet, big time. Uncle Tom media, oh yeah. Read it. The whole Uncle Tom complex is your facade is come tumbling down. You don't want to lead? You so called Mike Lee, that phony lied to me right there here on YouTube. You know why his house in Florida. You don't want to lead? You don't want to lead? Fuck you. Fuck you. Who fucking needs you? We'll lead. I'll lead. Media, you don't want to report? Fuck you. That's why you want to think your ratings are falling. Everybody laughs and you're a joke. We are the media now. The protests, the signs. Like I said, her first one, she spilled ignorance wrong. I think it's a perfect metaphor for those whole movement. It's great what they did down there in Australia. You start pouring these things in already. Isn't that the way this is? We got it all wrong for the last 30, 40 years. You've fallen for it. We have to take the hand that's still to us and we have to alter it and we have to change it because we sure can't put this genie back in the bottle. It's too late. I'm so sick and tired. And I've watched people say, Kevin, you have to worry about the people that are picking you up at airports, people are saying. I'm like, oh no, oh no. Why? Because the angels watch over me, for real. As you guys know, when I got sick, April of 2012, I had, the treatment was not going well with me. And I had to make the hard decision whether to have the bone marrow transplant or not. And I read that poem out by my father's potato digger right here by this beautiful, magnificent mountain. Same mountain, different angle. And I says, they'll decide for me. When it's ready for my time to go, I'll go. I've sit and watched so many, I'm so sick and tired of watching perfectly beautiful, healthy people die of cancer. Oh, cancer. How have we even accepted cancer is just a part of our society? Yeah, cancer's natural. When you're 80, your full life is the cancers go, the, the free radicals go rogue. 
Not a 15 year old, not an 18 year old, not a 32 year old, not a 23 year old, not a 37, not a 53 year old healthy people in the prime of their mind, not a 62 year old. No, no, it's environmental. And when are you going to quit accepting it? You refuse to lead? Fuck you. We'll lead. You refuse the media? Fuck you. We're the media now. You get up there, get those pictures taken, do what you want. This is a chance for one individual. It doesn't matter if it's groups of 10 or one single person. You know, people are going to unite. And if you don't think I'm making a difference, oh, anonymous, they're on our side now. Oh, do we need them. They came to me, John Ferrers came to me, clear back about April, started talking to me about this. And I agreed to go to DC. And I think so many people were like, oh, Fukushima, it's kind of fair tales. That cat call came out of the audience. Hey, what about the aliens? Because that's what they think it is. And that's what they don't get. They don't get. So they're doing their work now. And they're like, whoa, whoa. This fits right into the anonymous mantra. I says, oh, yeah, this is over the top. Because nothing else matters. This is the top of the heap. Why do you think Megan Rice picked this? the greatest activist. And I would like to say this about uh, Nadia. They found her in the jail cell. And if you don't know much about freaking her activism, let's talk about her. Why she's in prison. Her prison. Instead of those girls in Russia sewing 18 hours a day, now they're only sewing eight because of her. That's one girl. Old school activist, and I know, I'm gonna post Harvey Wasserman's beautiful, amazingly written article, which is magnificent. And I know I pissed off a lot of so-called old school activists and a lot of the activists in Southern California. I know I pissed a lot of you off, but I'm using an old technique called agitating. I mean, and I learned it from the best. Edward Abbey himself taught it to me. That's exactly what I've been up to the last few months. I've been using the agitating process. You know, all of you down in Southern California, how much I love you. You, you know I love every one of you activists, every single anti-nuclear energy unite. Yeah, and I've called people out and I went off because it's a technique called agitating. I've known exactly what I do. There is a method behind my madness and there always has been from day one. From day one. Yeah, post-ignorance has taken a while to catch on. I've been beating this drum for over three years, like Thomas Ackerman says. Three years is a very short time for real artists, activists to move. Usually it takes much longer than that. I love you. And then Wasserman, he's the greatest. I mean, everything he does is brilliant, but this last one he wrote about Pandora's Problem CNN is brilliant. I mean, brilliant. Gene Stone, Kathy, and you all know, say this about people talk shit about me in Japan. Ask Kathy Iwan, who was trapped over in there. They know how much I love them. They know how much, and anybody who don't believe that I'm a true human rights activist and I'm fighting for everything I got, and I don't worry, because all those people that passed with leukemia in the prime of their age, which I knew so many of them, including my father, including Carla, including Paul, including Jake, including Trace, I can go on and on and on and on. I don't worry because they watch over me. And I really believe that life is a test. And I honestly believe that they were pure. That's why they left and they were taken. I'm not pure enough yet. I got a ways to go. This is our chance to make a difference. People that have fallen for the lies, you've been postured and groomed into the lies, just think of this. Think about the house. People say, oh, they're going to stick you in a FEMA camp. You're already in a FEMA camp. It's called your house. Get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, go home at 8 o'clock, get to go home, watch a little bit of TV. Your house is a fucking FEMA camp. None of this shit's going to happen, could happen, would happen. Already fucking happened. Already. And you leaders don't want to lead? Fuck you. Don't fucking lead. We'll fucking lead. This is about quality, not quantity. We have answers. Don't underestimate our little movement. Don't underestimate it. And all you fucking print media whores that are getting on the other side of this, fucking go for it, go for it. And when they fucking you die of cancer, I hope they stand over your grave and read your propagandic fucking Uncle Tom fucking whore fucking print. To the NSA, to the police force, to all of you, every one of you. This is the great equalizer. We're all in this together. All of us are in this together. You can get cancer. And you think, oh, all your money and none of the can't buy, tell that to Steve Chinese Jobs. One of my doctors was one of his doctors. He really believed, his arrogance really believed, clear to the end, that the, his money could save him. His money couldn't save him. This is the great equalizer. It doesn't give a shit about class. It doesn't give a shit about race. It doesn't give a shit about age. It doesn't give a shit about socioeconomic status. It doesn't care about any of that. It doesn't care about male, female, black, white, freaking, whatever. It doesn't care. It doesn't care. It doesn't care if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter. This is the great equalizer.
Every one of you can get cancer. Every one of your loved ones can get cancer, including you journalistic fucking whores that work for the nuclear industry. Nuclear is the greatest lie in human history. Stay on tuning.